Good morning. My name is Laurel Snyder, and this is Lucy, and this is Puppy, and Puppy and Lucy and I are calling you today from our bed in Atlanta, Georgia, and we think, don't we guys, we think that bed is the best place in the world to be when you don't have to be in it, and not the most fun place to be when you do have to be in it. That's been our experience. When you have to wake up in the morning and get out of bed, it's the best place. And when your parents make you go to bed, it's the worst place. Or when you're sick and you have to be in bed. But when you don't have to be in bed, like today for Lucy and Puppy and me, it's super fun. So we're sitting here with a big stack of books and a nice cup of coffee. And we want to read you a story. And I am, I love books. I am a writer. And I write books for kids. This is my most recent book, Swan, The Life and Dance of Anna Pavlova. But I don't want to read you one of my books because I read my books all the time. So today I thought I would read you one of these books. I have, oh, I have all sorts of good stuff. I have The Latka Who Couldn't Stop Screaming, which is my favorite Hanukkah book. I have What Do People Do All Day, which one of my boys, my kids, left in my room. I have The Donut Chef, which I have memorized by now. I have my all-time favorite, Frog and Toad. And I have, oh, I have uh, Animals Should Definitely Not Wear Clothing. That's a weird one. Have you ever seen this book? It's a pretty good one. But I think today I'm going to read you Miss Nelson is Missing. And I got this book when I was about your age from a book order thing where they would send you a book at your house. You would get a box in the mail and it would have a book in it. And my mom and my grandmother or somebody signed me up for it. Miss Nelson is Missing. And this is Miss Nelson. She looks like that if you haven't seen this book before. Oh, by James, oh, by Harry Allard and James Marshall. The kids in room 207 were misbehaving again. Spitballs stuck to the ceiling. Paper planes whizzed through the air. They were the worst behaved class in the whole school. Now settle down, said Miss Nelson in a sweet voice. But the class would not settle down. They whispered and giggled. They squirmed and made faces. They were even rude during story hour. And they always refused to do their lessons. Something will have to be done, said Miss Nelson. The next morning, Miss Nelson did not come to school. Wow, yelled the kids. Now we can really act up. They began to make spitballs and paper planes. Today, let's be just terrible, they said. Not so fast, said an unpleasant voice. A woman in an ugly black dress stood before them. I am your new teacher, Miss Viola Swamp. And she rapped the desk with her ruler. Where's Miss Nelson? asked the kids. Never mind that, snapped Miss Swamp. Open those arithmetic books. Miss Nelson's kids did as they were told. They could see that Miss Swamp was a total witch. She meant business. Right away, she put them to work, and she loaded them down with homework. We'll have no story hour today, said Miss Swamp. Keep your mouth shut, said Miss Swamp. Sit perfectly still, said Miss Swamp. And if you misbehave, you'll be sorry, said Miss Swamp. The kids in room 207 had never worked so hard. Days went by, and there was no sign of Miss Nelson. Kids missed Miss Nelson. Maybe we should try to find her, they said. Some of them went to the police. Detective McSmog was assigned to the case. He listened to their story. He scratched his chin. Hmm, he said. Hmm, I think Miss Nelson is missing. Detective McSmog would not be much help. Other kids went to Miss Nelson's house. The shades were tightly drawn and no one answered the door. In fact, the only person they did see was the wicked Miss Viola Swamp coming up the street. If she sees us, she'll give us more homework. They got away just in time. 
Maybe something terrible happened to Miss Nelson. Maybe she was gobbled up by a shark. But that didn't seem likely. And there's a picture of what it would look like if Miss Nelson got gobbled by a shark. Maybe Miss Nelson went to Mars, said another kid. But that didn't seem likely either. I know, exclaimed one know-it-all. Maybe Miss Nelson's car was carried off by a swarm of angry butterflies. But that was the least likely of all. The kids in room 207 became very discouraged. It seemed that Miss Nelson was never coming back. And they would be stuck with Miss Viola Swamp forever. They heard footsteps in the hall. Here comes that witch, they whispered. Hello, children said someone in a sweet voice. It was Miss Nelson. Did you miss me, she asked. We certainly did, said the kids. Where were you? That's my little secret, said Miss Nelson. How about a story hour? Oh, yes, cried the kids. Miss Nelson noticed that during story hour, no one was rude or silly. What brought about this lovely change, she asked. That's our little secret, said the kids. Look, they're all being so good. Back home, Miss Nelson took off her coat and hung it in the closet, right next to an ugly black dress. When it was time for bed, she sang a little song. I'll never tell, she said to herself with a smile. P.S. Detective McSmog is working on a new case. He is now looking for Miss Viola Swamp. The end. The end. Lucy, did you like the story? Did you like it? What do you guys think? Did you like the story? I hope you liked the story. Lucy did not listen very well to the story. She's not very good at listening. But Puppy listened to the story. He's heard this story thousands and thousands of times over the years and he always enjoys it and he hopes you did too and he hopes that you have a big stack of wonderful books next to your bed and we're going to cuddle up and we're going to read another book and we hope that you will do the same. <laughs>